Yo, and welcome back to the iSpooge Daily Channel. This is an experimental tech and media brand, and this will be a vlog on the topic of I must be like the worst vlogger ever because thank you. So when I was between jobs, you guys hooked me up with some stuff like gym membership, stuff like that, like a couple hundred bucks to keep myself going until I got my first paycheck. And then I started working, I kept vlogging a little bit, but then I'm like, all right, no more. Like vlogging, I, I'm like the only vlogger who's like, yo, I'm not a vlogger, I'm just on here because I build vlogging platforms. And by the way, I'm starving. I'm gonna beg, can you give me some money to get to my next job? And then I get my next job and I like wind down vlogging a lot. Like, what kind of idiot vlogger am I? Because insanity is doing the same thing over and over and over and expecting different results. So I don't keep getting minimum wage jobs necessarily the same one over and over and expecting different results, but I'm like, oh, maybe I'll move out of the Bay Area to agriculture town, yada, yada, like wherever I go, it's the same thing. Confirmed. It's not, I think everywhere I go, it's the same thing. It's from the Bay Area to Minneapolis to agriculture town, California slash Jefferson territory. Uh, I'm trying to do it the boomer way, guys. I'm trying to do it. Get a job, pull yourself up by the bootstraps. And there's nothing that theoretically stops that from happening. If I were working 40 hours a week instead of 30, all that would go straight into savings. But I need to work like 25 hours a week just to cover the basics of food, transportation, insurance, gym, storage, all that stuff. I need to make an exact budget, but that's why I keep the receipts. Um, it's not like there's really a lot of fat that I can cut out of the budget. You know what I mean? Like I'm homeless. I pay car insurance, 70 bucks a month. I don't have car payments. Like I can't say I don't drink. I'm sober because I went out a few weeks ago, a few times. So that kind of like breaks that because before that I hadn't drank in like a year and before that I drank a few times I hadn't drank in like a year before that or at least six months. So it's always like six to 12 months of no drinking if not two, three years. I don't know the longest I've ever gone. But it's not a thing, that's why I don't keep track of it. Oh, and I just realized these lights that I want to be on are actually off. Oh well, that's okay. Um. Because I'm a bad vlogger. No, I do have this ring light, though. So that pretty much covers up all the external lighting. Everything else is just for my mood. Um, actually, you probably would see more of my... So I guess you can... I, the screen's at an angle. But yeah. Um, so one take vlogs aren't necessarily the only thing I can do with this channel. I want to do more, but I'm not putting energy into doing more. Because what else do I want to do? I mean, I really just want to build these platforms. And so what's so terrible about these minimum wage jobs? Like, really, it's not terrible so much as just I'm in a little hamster cage with a small group of people who become familiar, get those familiar spirits, and then it's just like they start disrespecting me and then other people see other people disrespect me, so they disrespect me. And then it's like this fire of disrespecting Harlan, making Harlan the pawn. That's my name, Harlan. Uh, you know, it's just always the same downward spiral. And it's because I don't stick up for myself. I don't check people in the workplace in real life sure but if it's in the workplace a job that I need or else yada yada but really holding on to the job is not getting me ahead like 
for a while I was getting ahead. I had a couple thousand, save, save, saved, and then our hours got cut back, and then because uh, we closed for a couple days a week, and then like we opened one more day, and then one more day, and we're still closed two days a week. So I worked five days already, and usually at least 30 hours, about 30, at least 30. You know, it goes up. You know, we're getting busier again now. Thankfully, we're getting busier, and so I'm getting like bigger checks, but without it being like 40 plus hours. What I'm noticing is when I'm saving, I'm feeling good, I'm saving, and then I'm doing things like not getting my car's oil changed, right? Eating, not eating twice a day, only eating once a day, right? So then I start losing some of the weight that I put on from lifting, and then it's like the only way I can save money is to just put things off. But that's not really saving the money. That's just keeping the money in an account, being miserable, but having the money, but still knowing like, okay, I guess I need to spend a bunch of money and then I spend my money and it's down to basically zero once I spend it all. Cause it's only ever a few hundred, a thousand that I can get ahead, ahead. And it's by not doing things like registering my car you know, I was driving around from June until like early October or late September on June expired tags. So that's like, and then, you know, there's $60 of fees there. So if I would have just got it right away, but I couldn't because in June, well, actually, no, I could have because beginning of July is when the restaurant shut down. I only knew it was going to go down for a week. So I didn't know like all of June that it was going to shut down anyway. So, and then we get to like the extra costs of like, okay, working in a dish pit, working with all kinds of caustic chemicals, working with all kinds of heat, taking things out of the oven, working with knives, you know, these are not a big deal, but right now you can see me itching my arm and it's because you can bet I probably got something caustic on my arm, like some, oh, just be more careful then, right? Yeah. Or it could just be dry from washing 800 times a day, which soap is caustic. So as careful as you are with hand soap, I know you're not even supposed to scratch. Like I know I don't even usually scratch. Usually I do it through my clothes, but it's just so itchy that it's like, oh, you're just, you're just making a scene so that people feel sorry for you and, and give you stuff so that you don't have to work like a good, honest, I'm noticing like, yeah, I'm programmed by boomers. I was raised by boomers. I, I'm i almost a boomer myself. It's itchy. Oh, you're trying to get pity. Oh, saying your arms are itchy. <laughs> so, yeah. I'm trying, I'm doing my best. You know, never mind all you know, I don't even complain about stuff that happens at work, right? Because I try to make this station be, this channel be evergreen, which means content that's good all the time. But yeah, uh, why don't I just check my vlog email and be a serious vlogger then? If going to work at a minimum wage job, no matter the city is so bad. It's not actually that bad. It's just, it's, you know, it's like the difference between disrespect and lack of respect. So the lack of respect can be neutral. The disrespect is actively disrespecting. And it's like anything but respect is difficult. So even people being neutral and not respectful, but not necessarily disrespectful, is draining it drains the energy and so I don't know I guess like the one last thing I can do is now that we're in winter this is what I did today and I think I'm gonna get back to is the 4 a.m. club and literally right now it's six it's dark outside it's been dark for a while last night I was literally dozing off to sleep at this time six o'clock 
And this morning, I'm not sure all the times I woke up, but the last time I woke up, it was still like 540. And that's not unheard of for me to wake up at that time, but it is, well, now that it's fall back, we are getting earlier mornings again. But it was getting pretty late with the non time, like the non uh, daylight savings adjustment. Like the latest I woke up was like 6.50 and I was like, whoa, how did I sleep this late? Cause yeah, some days I do actually have to be to work at eight. So if I'm sleeping till seven, that's danger zone right there. I never use alarms either, except to train myself. So basically setting the 4 a.m. alarm and just, so that I know what time it is. Cause I probably woke up around four or something as well. But I did doze back to sleep until uh, going on six. So I was here at about six today until 8.40 and then I went to work. And my plan is basically go to work, take a shower, eat, and then, you know, basically do something and then go to bed. But, you know, committing to that says, okay, well, that means you're committing to not having a social life, basically, because... You know, nothing, nothing. If I'm gonna be staying out, going out, whatever, you know, even 10 o'clock, that would be an early night, but that would be extremely late if I was being in the 4 a.m. club. So if I'm committed to 4 a.m. club, like that's just how it goes. I'm in bed by eight o'clock, I'm sleeping by eight o'clock and up by four o'clock. I don't necessarily need eight full hours, but leaving it there would be nice. So get out of here at six o'clock, be asleep by seven, maybe eight, be up by three to four some, right? Checks out. And since it's not Starbucks, well, Starbucks is where I do 4 a.m. club, that I'd be the first one there a lot. And that was in Mountain View Starbucks on Castro Street, um, 4.30 or four some days, I think. Pre-pandemic, it was easy. Post-pandemic, it got a lot harder to find places where you could go in at 4 a.m. and start your day. And then there, I would go to the work center at, I think I had to check in by like 8.30 or 9. Or if I was working my restaurant job, front of house, I would never had to go in before like 11, I think. Because I don't think we even opened until 10 or 11, like lunchtime. So yeah, just doing a big long work, stretch of work in the morning when my brain is still good, when I haven't been chipped away at all day. And then go to work and then basically be ready for bed by the time I get off work. Today, it's sort of cheating my, well, I did get in, you know, I did get in three and a half, hours this morning so it's I mean I just while setting up the routine I guess I'd have to be super tight but it's so against the cultural norm and yeah four years ago when I was doing it I wasn't thinking about like making friends or anything like that but now it's just like where are, where's my tribe? I might just have to accept that it's on the internet. I want it to be local people. But yeah, I'm like the worst vlogger ever because I'm like, I'm just gonna use vlogging as a vehicle to get me into a regular job. And most people are like, I'm gonna quit my job by vlogging. I'm like, that's me. I'm not an iconoclast, I'm just the opposite of the mainstream like all the time and I think I have reasons but then I have so few chances to even talk with people much less explain my reasons for being so weird I don't know it's like I'd really have to go I'm not going all in on on making friends and having a social life either so Might as well not like half 
do two things, might as well go all in on one thing, right? And going all in on a social life when you're a homeless guy who is not working in your field versus, okay, yeah, I went all in on being social when I was like in a good job in my field, like I was there, like I could be confident, like, yeah, that is external source of confidence or validation working a job in your field, but it's also just your, my resonance. Like right now I'm with people who basically think, act like I'm a joke. If not because they think I'm a joke, because they want to hold me down so that they can get the promotion or whatever, because I'm super not a joke. I mean, yeah, I'm inexperienced in the kitchen, but I always do things in a good way or whatever. But then people talk to me like I don't. Not all people, just certain people. And it's like specifically people that meet the archetype of my dad, like my OG bully, my dad. The guy who gave me all the initial injuries for future bullies to rip off this scab, rip off that scab, you know. Ha <laughs> ha, bullied, right? Yeah, my dad is the original bully, turns out. Oh, daddy issues, blah, blah, blah. Running out of focus on this vlog, which the point was just like I'm the dumbest vlogger because I'm I'm begging for money to get a regular job so that I can work the regular job and support my vlog, uh, my vlog platform development. And I vlog myself just for content and as a record of this novel experience of being homeless. Um, sort of like the joke is I'm a, I'm a hardworking first generation college graduate, entrepreneurial, empathetic, you know, homeless guy well if he's really that great he would have who's been living on the street for six years well if I'm really that great I would have solved my own problem by now is kind of the joke right like no great software engineer is unemployed right sometimes they are but you don't know them you know based on doesn't meet your expected way things work You know, I need to get my life set up before I can start like have, jumping on calls with people, you know? Before I can be responsive as a professional, I need to have the life of a professional. And like, I mean, right now I, I open Twitter, I saw that there's a DM, but I'm not opening the DM. It's the exact same thing with like my email, it's just like, I'm not me who's opening it. It's almost like, okay, you, you take me to a therapist and you try to diagnose me. It's not me they're talking to. It's some homeless guy that they're talking to. I am not myself right now. Like I am somebody else. And oh, sounds like you're just like a delusional, mentally ill homeless guy. I knew it. Like, cause a person is both nature and nurture. My nature is one way, so yeah, I'm my nature. But my nurture is 100% backwards of what I am. So like, at most, the nature side of me is right. But so much of what people look at is also the nurture side too, like how you speak, how you, you know, everything social is nurture. I mean, I guess maybe some of it could be nature. But it's a huge element that's not me. And so if you like put me through a behavioral interview, like it's not me you're interviewing. In a year when I have a different living situation, I'll be a different person. My nature will be the same, but I'll be I'll have nurtured myself into a completely different person. So like having to go through an interview process now, you know, like I'm just not a professional right now. And so just pretending to be a professional and stepping into that responsibility without everything I need need to support my life to, you know, fulfill that responsibility is kind of foolish. So, yeah, I'm I'm the worst vlogger, but I feel like I've got reasons that I'm just like trying to explain on this vlog and blah blah blah. Anyway, coming up on 20 minutes our customary time length, so we'll see about the format and blah, blah, blah. But yeah, I'm here. I'm good. Thanks for joining us. Take care. Bye.